In this video, I'll show you how to find the domain of a natural logarithmic function. This is part two of the series. The first question reads, find the domain of ln ln2 plus ln x. To do this, you will need to find two restrictions. A, the restriction for this, and B, the restriction for that. And I'll label it A and B. Now the reason why A is a restriction is because we know whatever is inside of ln must be greater than zero. If it's anything less or equal to zero, it will result in an error. So this part right here, ln2 plus ln x must be greater than zero. So now we have to solve for x. And to do that, I'm going to bring this over and I end up with negative ln x. And the reason why it becomes negative is because it was positive originally and ln2 on the left side. The next thing that I'll do is use the power rule and bring this negative 1 as an exponent to this value right here. So we end up with ln2 is greater than ln x to the power of negative 1. Now that I have a ln on both sides, what I can do is I can raise both the left and the right side as powers to the base e. And by doing that, look what happens. This e and this ln cancel, and you end up with 2 on the left side. And on the right side, you end up with x to the power of negative 1. Now remember, x to the power of negative 1 is the same thing as 1 over x. So 1 over x is the same thing as x to the power of negative 1. And from here, we solve for x, and we end up with x must be greater than 1 over 2. The next restriction, we'll focus on b here is that this x, just like in the overall expression, this x must be greater than 0. If it's anything that is 0 or less, you'll get a, an error. So x must be, this must be greater than 0. We just found our two restrictions. Let's place both of these restrictions on a number line, and negative 3. So we know that x must be greater than 0. And since it cannot equal to 0, I'm going to use a hollow circle to denote that. And it's going this way. Also, x must be less than half. So half is right here. And I'm going to use another hollow circle right up here. And x must be greater than half. So it will be going this way. Now, where both of these lines share a commonality is everything after half excluding half. Now, to write that down, we're going to say the domain is x such that x is greater than half. Now take a look. Remember, anything where they share a commonality is where the domain is for all real x values. Let's move on to question two. In question number two, they are asking us to find the domain and range for f at x is equal to 1 over e to the power of x minus 1. Now, like always, the denominator cannot equal to 0. So we're going to set e to the power of x minus 1 cannot equal to 0. We're going to bring this over. We end up with e to the power of x cannot equal to 1. And to solve for x, what we're going to do is ln both sides. Lawning the e gets rid of that e. And you're left with x cannot equal to 0 because ln 1 is equal to 0. So our domain is x such that x cannot equal to 0 for all real values of x. Now they're also asking us to find the range. And to do that, let's take a look at the graph that represents y is equal to e to the power of x. You'll notice that in this graph, y never reaches anything less than 0. So what we can conclude with our example is that y can take on any real value that is not 0. So r is y such that y is not equal to 0. And so there you have it. That is how to find the domain of a natural logarithmic function. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at studyforce.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.